What the heck? Sometimes Twitch is a little weird. I think I might die. Don't die. Don't die. Sneezing, man. Sneezing. Okay. I promise I will not sneeze. I mean, I can't promise anything because, of course, I'm going to sneeze. But let's get this show share story something let's get this on the road all right we gotta finish this one my god i feel like months have gone by years possibly february 25th 9 47 a.m district court defendant lobby number two this is defendant's lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? Where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth. 
Knowing you, you've already figured out it out. Who's the owner of 777 ID number, that is? Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. It's like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. That number does not belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much, so why I came here to hear what you have to say. It's the first time he's ever done something like this. It's true. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth. Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. It depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. Ooh, we love the carrot. We love the carrot. I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. See you in court, right? Oh, this is actual tension. Sorry. All right, let's go. This is it. Wrong one. I'm ever gonna find out what Chief Gant has on her? It's now. Obviously, dummy, you have the evidence in your hands. Literally. <sighs> You're doing the suspense on the wrong things. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. You're putting the suspense points on the wrong things. Okay. February 25th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number nine. Courtroom number nine. <laughs> There's my favorite bald man. Court is now in session for the trial of Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecutor should be ready, Your Honor. Normally, this would be when the prosecution pulls forth its opening statement. Yeah, but before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. No, 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 no. Chief Gantz? Well, look at this Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, uh, Been uh, back to the pool yet? Why is he so obsessed with the pool? I don't care. He's got something in his brain, and he's gonna do some... He's obsessed with it. No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Don't think I could top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Are you gonna say something? Lana! That is to say, the defendant has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. Oh, God, no. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be regretted her request. Uh-huh. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. You should just tell him that you stole the damn stuff out of his, uh, out of his, uh, safe, and he doesn't have the, he doesn't have the, uh, blackmail stuff on you anymore. What is this about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Eh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! You can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana, 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 Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, 
but it has sufficiently proven the case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm? Well, defend defendant clearly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. <gasps> sweating, sweating. This could not be happening. It bears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Objection. Yeah, baby, save it. Uh -huh. One moment, Your Honor. I knew it, Edgeworth, coming in the clutch. Mr. Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution has yet to prove has not yet proven the uh, defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would be premature. <laughs> Sorry. Come now, worthy. I look how they just appear. Uh, I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, huh? Uh oh, he got the finger. He's giving Gant the finger, huh? I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes? Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. <laughs> Sorry. I have a lot of dirty thoughts today. I, I apologize. Uh, what am I doing? Who am I kidding? It's every day. But this is not appropriate for this game. Right? Right? So we're going to move on. Okay. With this sudden confession from the defendant. Yeah, no kidding, right? Like, come on. It's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal? Hmm, not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. You're right, above board. <gasps> With integrity! Alright. Oh, hey, kitty cat, are you coming back? Hmm, I thought so. Your Honor, prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call... Ms. Emma Sky. Come here, buddy. Alright, sorry, the cat is back and he wants to be put in his little baby harness. And it might be a second. Ugh. Alright, there we go. You got it there? He's like, yes, that is exactly what I wanted to be. A little baby. Ms. Emma Sky. I request the court hears her testimony. Hold it! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. Oh, smacking it. Just smacking it right back and forth. Come here. Come here. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, all right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this, mark my words. Uh-oh. That's an open threat in open court. Yeah, baby. Ms. Amerskat, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. <gasps> oh. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma, Emma Sky. My occupation, I'm Alana's little sister and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is this is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it is most certainly is. Stare, stare contest, stare it down. 
Well, 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 okay then. He sure gave up in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. All right, let's do this thing. Okay. Let's see. Um, I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I never forgot what I saw that day, that in that instance. The man raised up his knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. Well, you just said you remember everything. Uh, it's, uh, it's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth. What does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Oh my gosh, they should open, like, a law office together. It would be amazing. Okay, and then they could get, like, a condo together, and then it could be, like... Anyway, let's see. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. <sighs> I was waiting in my sister's office that day. Sure. Man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget when I saw that. You just... Oh, that instant. Okay. Um. Can you tell me... Tell us about that. Mr. Marshall jumped on dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out? Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right. But just then, the lightning flashed again outside. <laughs> that sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the defect detective about what I saw. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Hear more, of course. You spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago? Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman what you saw? Yes, but... At the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? No, we gotta see that picture, babe. We gotta see the picture. This picture, the witness drew. I believe it has very important meaning. But the last the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness. Would you mind if we address the statement of your of your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. <gasps> oh my gosh, she's so scared! I drew a picture of the scene once, but it seems to have been lost. Mm. Uh... Where's the evidence list? Evidence list. Objection. Mr. Edgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into that drawing, that picture. And yet, you would insist on denying its existence? <gasps> huh? Bug eyes. Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecution, as the prosecutor of the case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That 
may well be. But it, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold, this is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over? Turn it... Oh! What is this? Yes, what is that? Hey! That's it! That's the picture I drew. He snuck it in. He really is a good man. Okay, indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. Wrestling. Wrestling a little bit. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. Um. What's the meaning of this? What are you two doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists, they're, they're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists together fit together to form one. You can see the marks here. They're torn apart from each other. Oh, look at the judge doing a little investigation. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Bug eyes, bug eyes, bugging it out. Order, order. But Miss Guy, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor. Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. <gasps> yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see. <gasps> but you see, he bugs his eyes bug way more. Okay, that's way more buggy. Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. Uh, there is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. Does it say edgy is a stinky booty? God damn it. Every chance they get, they put this stupid music in. That's uh, that thing. That thing was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper. Evidence was stored and updated to the court record. <laughs> Very well, witness. Will you please testify testify about this picture you drew two years ago? <gasps> oh, yes, sir, your honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seems to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. Obviously. Emma's picture. Emma, 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 Emma. Okay. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw that instant. Uh, to think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe's dark about to murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. Does it? Does it really, sir? The defense now may begin its cross examination.
This is the picture I drew two years ago. Sure, the flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw that instant. Um... Still doesn't have what's his name's name on it though. Um Yeah, he definitely covered something up. St oh, because he's got stabbed in the back. So if he got stabbed in the front. I forgot about that. I knew there was like an inconsistency. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture, the witness drew, contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright. Perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy? The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see the tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken, too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found in the victim's body. It was a conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. <gasps> what? Ah, what's the meaning of this? Edgeworth, perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right. Uh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> the tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness memory is mistaken. <laughs> just, it's just an objection volley. <gasps> That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time. But she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this is inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About the little something called falsified evidence. You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah! Bug eyes. Bug eyes.
Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the evidence that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony. Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. This is my belief that somewhere in the story there is a lie. <gasps> do, 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 do. Now it's getting interesting, right? <clears throat> I, I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there is no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. Ah! There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's? Could there have been one? Ah, uh, there is another one. If the witness in this... If the witness in this... If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what you saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instance, Emma really did see a broken knife. Assume, then, that you have some information about the other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Do, 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 do. Take a look at this. Here is the real murder weapon. Um, do you have a picture of the, wait a minute. Oh, the, the picture it has the thing, right? Okay. The answer lies in the past, two years in the past, right here inside this picture. This picture of the ceremony awards. Ah! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the broken murder weapon. Look at his eyes. My God, he gets so upset. You really should watch your blood pressure, dude. Okay. Um, where were we? Where were we? Oh, yes. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. Dubby, dubby, dubby. That's a broken knife. As we earlier concluded, the knife in this drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order, order, order. Neil Marshall was awarded the King of Prosecutors that day. As the award was given, this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that, that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors' award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would have be, would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean, the man raising the knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh. But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait, 
I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? This list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back? I knew it! This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. Oh god, with this song. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. It must have locked this part away deep inside me. For this exact time. Oh, perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Ms. Gay? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger. This is, should be interesting. There's no need to sweat about it, dude. Unless we have to listen to that damn song again. Okay. Emma's Recollection. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked, and I rushed out toward both of them. I think I think I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. The blue badger? This is certainly most unusual. Uh, try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. No, thank you for pointing that out. Judge. Yes, well. Stop! Please, don't pursue this any further! Lana, what is the meaning of this? Please remain set seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. You can't just leave it that at that. Uh, Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come to the, this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence! The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. Please detain the defendant. Seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. Emma's recollection. When I saw the man raise his knife, okay, I panicked and I rushed toward them both. Both of them. I think I knocked, I think I, I knocked away the, the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning and that's when I saw the blue badge. Okay, what the hell does that mean? I need, I need to know. Are you sure about this? Of course. See? Even drew the picture of him here. But... It was Chief of Detectives who thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. The Blue Badger didn't even exist two years ago. It's quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised, too, when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh, brother. Just what you thought a thing can cause you. No commotion! Yeah, I mean... Where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. Okay, wait. <sighs> I have an idea. 
we have to look at okay so this is the last day so we have to look at evidence that has not been presented before all of this has been presented all of this has been presented except for this guy um unstable jar the mysterious blue badger was in fact this but that's er uh, what exactly is that i believe it's some sort of jar but mr wright that doesn't look anything like the blue badger indeed it doesn't as it stands now it's just a plain jar however what if we were to change our viewpoint our viewpoint I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this form. Oh, God. Why with the sound? Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, it really is an unstable jar. Oh, it's open on both sides. How is that a jar? It can't be a jar with two... Oh, you know what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um... Oh, okay. This is really a pain in the ass, isn't it? I can't, I can't, ah! I should be able to rotate it in different ways. Aha! <sighs> well, is this a miracle or what? It also explains why there's blood on it. No one could possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. Oh, for God's sakes. Order, order. The defense has proven his claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So the badger thing was actually just a jar. It doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see... You see, this changes everything. Indeed. Very well, then. Please tell us. What's the difference now that we know the witness saw this jar? Um, location? Allow me to make these... to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At the very specific angle, it, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have been... Where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in the picture just taken on the day of the crime. And on the shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Skye's desk. Lewis has testified so herself. Yes. And... It is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body from Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? Yes. 
Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. What? If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. The next instance, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? It would have to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if, my, if I may draw your attention to this place once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf that Jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Ah! The suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. Since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No, Miss Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes, there is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have no idea, but nevertheless. I don't know if I can go through with this. Do it, dude! Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If evidence took place as a defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment... Assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Yep. Having a suit of armor with a with a sword pointing out is probably not the best safety precaution thing. <gasps> you mean Mr. Marshall died because of me? No, not I mean not because of you. You're still a child and a victim. No! In the dark. Like. And the only reason why that dude was there was because of him. So I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved. With, so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. This is just unbelievable. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Objection! What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Guy, but given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered per Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out what Emma did, wasn't it? Like, she would have been a... Oh my god, come on. I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I had no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe you in your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me. What? Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence since you, you know, tampered with it. <clears throat> we don't have any evidence. Then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Oh, no, no, no. She's getting the finger. Hmm. Touche, Miss Guy. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? Come on, Phoenix. Keep up. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or worse, Mr. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the chat. 
for better or worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of his person who took his life. In one manner or another. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility is left to you. A message from the deceased. <laughs> I don't even know what to, does that mean. Does such a message exist? I have got to think back to the court record. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. Um. Um. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left. It's, it's got to be in the evidence. This message from the deceased is already in your possession. Mr. Wright! Will you stop at nothing to prove my sister's a murderer? She's not a murderer, man. I mean... You guys... Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. No, this is actually, uh, this is the fifth episode. So, um, it's quite long. And there's so many flashbacks. And that's really what's been making it so long. But this is the final day. Thank God. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so Mia is already gone, um, and we're on the second the second sidekick. If you've played them before, now then, Mister Wright, please show us the piece of evidence that conveys the message from the deceased. <sighs> It has to be from the actual crime. Um, this? This is a message from the deceased. Um, right. Now then. This is a message. Ah, it wasn't? Ah, goodness. Okay. Yeah, I honestly feel like I, I, um, it's never ending. <laughs> there is so many, like, twists upon twists upon twists at this point. You're just like, come on, dude. If a dead person left behind a message, it would have to be in written form. That's the only logical conclusion. Okay, 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 okay. Better be careful, you might wind up deceased yourself. <laughs> oh, edgy. Um. <sighs> now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence. Well, it has to be... Uh, okay. The, it has to be part of what... Gant was bull, um, was blackmailing us with. So the only other piece of evidence is this. Take that! Take that! This is a message left by the deceased. Uh, the blue badger from before, right? <laughs> Judge. Always oh, going to just speak the killer's name. If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Uh, looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see faint trail of blood on this jar. Looks like someone wiped the blood away. Uh, I wonder who did that. <laughs> yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments is not wiped away. Uh, yes, there is a line here drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. 
One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points. And the victim message will become apparent. No! No! <laughs> Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains. Oh, sorry about that. I keep forgetting to change the stupid... Um, I'm going to do it right now. Uh, the settings. Like, they changed some weird settings. and Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, that was not a long message. They're just trying to stop spam. But, um... Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. That makes sense. Right. And then they had to, like, since it was, like, an add-on, they had to remind everybody of, like, every reference they've made in the first four games. Okay. That, that is totally helpful and makes sense to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is this stupid things? Um... All right, you know what? Don't worry. Let's see if we can do this. Um... All right. I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make letters. It's only one thing a victim would have written, given the circumstances. It's murderer's name! How do I connect them? Oh, here we go. Oh, wait, I guess I don't have to? That's... Okay. Yeah, so when you do that. Alright, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Bloop. Bloop. Just gotta get Emma out. Yeah, I, oh god, it's a bird. <laughs> That's, that bird, yes, the bird. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma! So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. <laughs> like they would have charged a 14 year old girl who was like scared in the dark. Come on. She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. See where they can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gantz, do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, weren't you not? Ah! Yes, worthy. Because of you... An innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. <laughs> but Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. 
I'm afraid that's not important. <laughs> it kind of is, but, you know, it's fine. Didn't you know we aren't defenders of justice? What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery. <laughs> With all that schmoozle that I did, don't even worry about it. Don't think about any of that. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. What? Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, 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 order! The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. Do, do, do. So exciting. Okay. We will save. Yes. Save the prox. Save it. Hoy. Okay. Jump back in it. Jumping back in it. February 25th, 12.06. My God. It's barely noon. And all the drama could not be contained. Uh, District Court. Defendant Lobby number two. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Ha! Huh. Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. I hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Um. Oh, I guess I am. Ha <laughs> ha! Come back later. Aw, he's so sad. He doesn't want to be left out. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal! Making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Wait, is this his only joke? I take it Lana having you run errands again? Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give you th this to you. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me start again. Here, she asked me to give this to you if there was a break in the trial today's trial. Evidence law. Edgeworth is talking about the, this just the other day. Also, Phoenix, I'm not sure if he opened any book during his um, law schooling. Anyway, his schooling days. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Oh, yeah. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. <laughs> It seems so. You could have at least studied some evidence law, really. <laughs> See? I'm not the only one. I forgot about that, though. The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. <laughs> I love how it's a little... That's a little ducky. <gasps> it's a little ducky and a little, and a little outfit that's like a... Sherlock Holmes outfit. Wait, why do they have Sherlock Holmes on the front of Evidence Law? You know what? It doesn't matter. It's an adorable ducky. I want that ducky in my life. Okay, him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. Evidence Law securely slipped into pocket. <laughs> doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is the Chief Prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, Detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why am I still sitting in that prosecutor's seat? Despite all these allegations being thrown at me. Miss Edgeworth, the real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility has been all ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Skye found out that she unwittingly caused the man's death. And now... You're telling me you want to do more? You gotta be kidding me, pal! I'm missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. Eh? She really stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there! Dun, 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 dun. 
What? And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Thank God. Please. Please let it end. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. February 25th, 1252, District Court, number nine. Um, okay. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Ms. Lana's guy. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Ah, of course. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> Normally, this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness. But, uh, <clears throat> cough, 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 cough. <clears throat> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have a <clears throat> struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking and... Mm -hmm. Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. Oh, look at him being all cheeky. Right? He totally knows. Like, <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to sit back and let spiky hair do all the work for me. What? But there's no precedent for you proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but the very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. Uh, the defense may now call forth the next witness, Mr. Wright. You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is good as over. Ah, fine, jeez. The defense calls... Time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Um. I think we don't want to call Gant right away. Because we need more information before we can get him. Get him! Um, so probably Lana first. Let's do it. Objection. Objection! It appears I've overestimated you, Mr. Wright. Huh? For a moment, I actually thought you knew what you were doing. Mr. Wright, the court has long since tired of your questionable antics. What? Oh, wait, did I not? Oh, crap. Wait, didn't I do this? What? Did I not do it? Oh, what am I doing? What? Oh, I guess I do have to pick him. Ah, <sighs> all right, fine. I thought I clicked the wrong one, but the first I click the same one twice. That's really sad. Okay. Fine. Call Damon Gant. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the sand. Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? Gosh. I love this guy, but he is just really not on top of it. He is. You know what? He, he totally um... Let's let's look let's look at him here. He has great teeth, first of all, um, which makes me think maybe they're not his own, but he definitely has had some work done. So maybe those are caps. It's very possible. Um, Mr. Gant had first-hand knowledge of the crime. 
I feel we should hear that he has to say about it. Huh. That is sneaky. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? Uh-huh. True. All right. Bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. I mean, he's got perfect hair. He's got this killer tan. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy. Are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So, you want to play hardball, eh? Please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gant, and I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, righto. Watch with the grim face. First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean the time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, either you are very brave or very foolish. You are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure. Take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Um. Of course, such an action carries with it a certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. Testimony. All right, here we go. SL9 incident. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. The power outage didn't help either. When I went to, to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently, she had already uh, arranged the crime scene. That's pretty fast. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Huh. Is that when Dark was arrested? Yeah. Oh, he was lying on the floor unconscious. When Emma sent Neo flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. Okay. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Sure. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Um. Yeah, but you had this in your stupid safe. Wait, here we go. Where's the stupid jar? There we go. Objection. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's the blue badger you showed us earlier. <laughs> a piece of the jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant, 
These articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concept concrete blah 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 blah. They are both concrete proof that you have also played a part in the illegal investigation. Chief Gant, what is the meaning of this? Ho! Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival worthy. So you admit it then, that you were involved in the forgery. Who me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Isn't that right, right -o? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. So he's just a giant conspiracy. He's like, this conspiracy is to cover up my own conspiracy is really a conspiracy. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. What? What? A check for the gumshoe salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. <laughs> yes, well, the light of the detective's present. Give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. Oh, gosh. Okay, here we go. My, my. Kids these days are longer know how to put two and two together. Hey, kitty cat. Alright, are we ready for evidence and forgery? And a kitty cat getting all worried. Here we go. Let's see, what's in it now? A jar fragment? And a list? Oh, for all I know, you could have put pa uh, planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Okay, well that's obviously lies. Hmm, Mr. Wright. <laughs> <sighs> yes, Your Honor. When investigating the crime scene, we should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Uh, indeed, I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. Wow, look at him getting all daddy bossy on us. And that look in his eyes, that is not okay. Like, he is definitely excited. <laughs> Yuck. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is... well, you know. All right, Unji. In return, though, I know, I know. That place, right? Um, why are these guys telepathic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evidence and forgery. Okay, well, that's just... <sighs> yeah. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark's convict was convicted, then they're worthless. Okay. There's no reason I would... Okay, alright. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Okay, that's gotta be wrong. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all of this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What's this benefit? What would, of course, be the positions you have, Chief of Police? Oh, the resolution of SL9 incident occurred, uh, secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? Yeah, kinda. What do you mean? 
Even without that case, I was already aligned to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Ezroth? Yeah, he was going to be made chief anyway. Yeah. Be careful when pointing out the finger, or you might wind up being pointed at. So that means there's only one possible motive for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> there, it's out in the open now. Aji, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? Uh-oh. By all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone else's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Alright, fine. Press that. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I really care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd be better think again. Cause I'm a sociopath. Seriously though. You're right. You didn't feel so you don't feel so sorry for anyone. Mm-hmm. Be tough on crime, tough on people, that's how I was raised. Wow. Trauma dump, why don't you? You seem to be laxing up on yourself though. Ho 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 ho. That is a good one, Worthy. Um, could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would have helped someone out. Um. Oh, right. He has control over Lana now. Duh. True, you might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Hmm. Mr. Wright. It appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend a hand. Um. <clears throat> Okay. That's not what I meant. Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? Obviously, now it's Lana. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky, The defendant? I believe it's quite obvious in the light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who wouldn't want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would have also had a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. <laughs> self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved? Lana Sky was appointed Chief Prosecutor of the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this is job changer was you, Chief Gant. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look good for you, Gant. But how would he profit from all of this? Oh my god, Judge. Really? Really? He would be able to use a Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? How did this guy get his job? I want that backstory. Okay? I need to know. Was this how he always was? Or did like he lose his mind as he lost his hair? Like what is going on? Oh wait! You must mean puppet as someone forced to do his bidding. Never mind. Took him a minute. A minute, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in her foraging evidence. Your motive to appoint her as Chief Prosecutor so you could control her. Right now, my boy, you have quite an imagination. Next, let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> they were like, well, 
You already named that, so we don't have to change any of the stuff on the door. <laughs> That's perfect. Do I have any proof of this? What? That I controlled Lana. For example, is Lana testifying that I have done such a thing? Lana? She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she testified against Gan. I'm afraid without any proof, this amounts to nothing more than conjecture. Now that's a fancy word for him. Unless, that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh, which one would that be? Of course, I'm talking about the murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The chief prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get it hurt. What do you, just what do you mean? I love how he does like open threats and the judge is like, what? I didn't hear anything. What he means, your honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover it up, of his involvement. What? 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 I don't believe it. Really? Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, you can't be serious. Huh? This. This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder. That's that. Impossible. I don't know. Your Honor, I was merely uh, reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easy-to-understand language. <laughs> the finger! It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. That's right, team-up time again. It looks like he's the one who decided to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder. <sighs> I can't really prove it, I don't think, at this point. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. <gasps> just a man! The question is, is he a criminal? And I believe the evidence will tell. I see. All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got. And it better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. Um, oh wait, we do have evidence. I forgot about the, the log. I re eh, ID card list. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. Seven 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 seven. Sorry, but there is no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. What? How do you know that? The safe in the Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. And seven digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean. I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was seven 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 seven. seven. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Oh, now he's sweating. Never seen him sweat before. Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense search of my office was in violation of regulations. <laughs> Just all right. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. Oh, he actually kind of looks like he's pooping. Um, dude, drink prune juice or something. Don't, pr don't uh, hurt yourself, okay? 
Chief Gant. Uh, so you admit it? You entered the evidence room? On the day of the crime? Oh yeah, he's definitely pooping. What about it? I'm the chief of police, whether it's on the evidence room or the bathroom. <laughs> See? I, uh, he's got something on his mind. What's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me. When you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do in the evidence room. Wait, he goes to the bathroom in the evidence room? Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Oh, of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. Uh, lies, my friend, lies. Um. Totally. You hadn't seen him in days, Chief Gant? I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Alana Skye's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet the chief. Hey, on the day of the crime. We got this, we got this. Um, lost item, half-written document, saying submitted to the chief of police. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So, Detective Goodman filed out, uh, filled out this lost item report. He would have had to give that report to Chief of Police. Yet you're in possession of the report, which means it can't be sure if he filled it. He filled it. He filed it, excuse me. Uh, how do you know? How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompany the detective to the evidence room. Da -na -na -na. I accompanied him? Yeah. There's no other way to murder the way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on. Let me guess what you're going to say next. That the chief of police murdered poor Goodman. Uh, yeah, duh. Exactly. But wait. The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would still have been found on his body. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> no! Oh wow, that is that is an explosion. Look at that. That is Chief Gant, you didn't. Oh, he's pooping again. Okay, here we go. The murder was most likely a spur-of-the-moment crime for no, no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contacted Lana at the, at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright, that the victim's body was discovered in prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know? And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the ch chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. So you think I'd just order an officer to do it? Hey, you take this here dead body over the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. G 
you get? You left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. You put it you put it in Edgy's trunk. I mean, I think that's kind of obvious. That's where she found it. And this time, I thought it would was a useless clue. I was just taking up space. Yeah, exactly. This is what I'm telling you. Every clue has to be used. Um. Uh, <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's a stupid thing that's been here. Just sitting here for no apparent reason. Right there, the screwdriver. This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What? What's that? A screwdriver? But what does it have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth. Think back to the day of the crime. What is the screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Ah! I was asked to go by the chief, uh, Grant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office, but you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by... The, mo the body was moved by that car. Hey, cat, stop it. No, not my face. Okay, Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of the Mr. Edwards' car. Yes, unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edwards to transport evidence from a closed case? <coughs> There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice. Ms. Lanaskai. I'm surprised he didn't just set up edgy to take the fall, you know what I'm saying? Order, order, order! What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal in the defense's outrageous accusations? Outrageous! Think back to the photograph Ms. Starr took at the prosecutor's office. There was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. A photo of a body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please, say something. I believe. Your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Rhino, but I'm not having... But I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. And we have to get going if we're going to make time for that early bird special. Objection. But cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier. A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That's not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this. Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. Uh, I stabbed old Goodman, that's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then ha show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright. Yeah, Your Honor. Do you have any concrete proof? Proof that the Chief Grant Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Guy dispose of his body. No, no, I don't. Uh, I have no proof yet, obviously. 
It's no use showing evidence. I'm not sure of myself. No, Your Honor, at present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. See it, Aji. Uh, In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the chief. What? There's a tip. Never gamble. What you can't afford to lose, righto? Dang it! It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. <laughs> okay, OG. I'll leave the rest to you. That's rude. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. Ah, oh, god damn it. What? Lady Luck, huh? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth? What do you mean? There is one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor to hearing her testimony. Lady who knows the truth. Another witness. Uh, in the absence of conclusive evidence, only other method of proof is testimony. <sighs> but Chief Gant was involved invoking his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else, no more witness, who can answer all the questions. Raise this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Uh, why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, the defense calls <gasps> Lana. 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 <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I, I am sad. Okay. She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. The court will now take its final recess for the day. Really? Oh, why? I want it to be finished! <laughs> Make it be finished! <laughs> Alright, I'm not whining. I am actively crying at this point. Okay. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re... Hold on. Huh? Chief Gant, I thought you were going to eat. Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana? I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Ah, uh, this isn't good. Of course, you'll never support such an outrageous claims anyway, right? <laughs> Just something to think about. Alright then, I've got a lunch date to meet. Like that totally does not even face the judge. Look at him, look at him, he's just like, well, okay then. Okay, if there aren't any further objections, I have thought there was something up with this judge since day one. I mean, besides from being clueless, this court is now in recess. Oh, he's so upset. Edgy is on edge. Alright. 2.04 p.m. District Court. Defendant lobby number two. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief. He's something else, ain't he, pals? Detective Gumshoe. Ha <laughs> ha I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah? Sorry to hear about that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've already decided where to work now. At your office. I knew he was going to say that. I was like, he's going to, yeah. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top-knotted girl you used to work with. Could he mean... Maya? Maya? I don't remember. Maya? 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 Mia? I don't know. Um, look, we're all out of moves now. Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How 
is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair. He has the right to refuse to testify. Hmm, settle down, right? Remember what the judge said. But chief, that's not right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks. What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the chief refuses to testify, the opposite hold also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything, too? Oh, she's back. Hi. Emma, are you okay? Yeah. When I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now that I finally know what really happened. To think that all of this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all to just protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she had changed. Perhaps it was easier th that way for her. Perhaps, blah, blah, blah. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. <gasps> what do you mean? What do you think I mean? <laughs> to follow Chief Gant's orders. She must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything that Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. <gasps> it was all my fault. It's all because I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't be blaming yourself now. If you wanted to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery. But he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we better get back. It's time for the final act. That's... Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going to, with you. I want to be there. When Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. To be continued. We're saving it. Back. Courtroom number nine. Here we go. Okay, now then, will the defendant, Ms. Lana Sky, please take the stand? Ms. Lana Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I am sure you're aware of what is required of you. But, Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Ms. Sky. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course. The truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. She's like, yeah, that, that'll be great. Great comfort to me when I'm in prison. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Oh, please don't. Oh, you mean that relationship, right. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. Gant and the Fabrication. Do, do, do. I worked alongside Gant for years. There is no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found prosecutors when I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted and had nothing to do with Emma. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I am confessing to capital offense. Of course, I'm sure. But Lana! If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. Jeez. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. 
she sacrifices herself for me. <laughs> but what if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Oh, that's good to know. That's very helpful for when I'm pressing her. I mean, you know what I mean. Get down. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. I worked alongside Gam for years. Okay, that's true. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. That's... Uh, okay. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. Boop, 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 boop. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken, broken, the broken prosecutor award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? But partial. But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed of was possible. Uh-huh. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change the statement. Really? You mean... Prosecutor Marshall would wound up being killed by Dark. Something like that. If that's so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh. That was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. All just to protect me. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is... After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife and planted it inside the wound, then moved the body. Um... You planted the tip, and then you moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? Of all people should know Edgeworth. You've already had a good head on your shoulders. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of others. Why did you move the body? When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Ms. Skye moved the body. The piece of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Okay. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Okay, um... Well, how did the jar threaten her plan? I need to know this. Miss Guy, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered. If that were, tr if that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have to have been in vain. Even so, I'm compelled to bring everyone's attention to a significant contradiction within your testimony. 
A contradiction in my testimony. You testified, and I quote, The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on the jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write the message on the jar, it must not yet have been broken before he died. <gasps> he couldn't have written Emma's name on a shattered jar. Order, order. Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regards to this jar and its bloody message. And maybe missing something critical here. Something critical? Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are. About the truth towards which we are headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. The jar and, and message in blood. In blood! I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. But it was dark in the room, and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were so large, I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You mean you were the one who wiped away the message in blood? It wasn't Chief Prosecutor at the I wasn't Chief Prosecutor at the time. She did think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Jar, message, and blood. Okay. I immediately noticed blood traces on the jar. Alright. But in it was a dark it was dark in the room, and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were so large, I'm sure I got them all. This guy, I believe this jar conceals a truth even you were uh, unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. <gasps> in the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was still blood on it. But... The witness testified. She gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off. Yes. Which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one who showed up on the scene. Chief Gant got there before you. A twist on the twist! But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may be well, but everyone makes mistakes. Even once, I wasted an entire day looking for my indentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ha! <laughs> Can you believe that? Actually, I can. Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on a jar a shattered jar another person discovered this scene prior to the witness i hope you are not implying this person was chief gant at the time he was looking for dark downstairs besides even if he was there who why would he break the jar the question is if he did arrive there first why did he hide the facts for two years
<gasps> well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? <laughs> no. He's very upset. He's very upset. It's not a time for him. It's his buddy. It's his pals. Palsy Walsies. The man he knew when he used to have hair. Okay, wait. I'm not the one on trial here. Damon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar. He proceeded to break the jar and purposely hide one of the broken pieces. Question. What is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. This handling of evidence, too. But why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Skye believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Leading her, lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark. Sparing Emma, and therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Skye became ch the chief's puppet. Oh, she, that was a deep bite, girl. No, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop saying it to protect the chief. I, I can't watch you suffer anymore for my, for my sake. No, no, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up their most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. Hmm, I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. What? Me? Wait a minute. What if... We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Yeah, that's right. You're getting there, finally. We're limping along. We're limping. Ugh. Alright, Lana might be right after all. Uh, what do you mean, right? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Ow! Miss Sky, please testify once more. But, if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But, I do remember knocking Mr. over Mr. Marshall. Miss Sky, if you will. I... I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination might not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. Finally, jeez. All right, the witness may testify once more for the final time. Please let it be the final time. Please, I can't do it anymore. I can't. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. I saw, when I saw what happened, I thought she... I thought she did it! That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gant help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But it, it was all really, really a fabrication. Emma might be innocent. Duh, get it. Unbelievable. The body was impaled on the armor sword? You were the only one who saw that. If you only had proof. Actually, I do have proof. What? I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright, please present this picture. Okay, the only thing he... I don't remember receiving a p any pictures from Lana. Uh, she gave it to you this morning, right? It seems to remember getting something from her take. Oh, check the evidence again. Yeah, there must be a picture in there somewhere. The only thing she gave us is... Oh, no. Go back. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> I meant to press that. The only thing she gave us was this, this book. So let's... What? Is, what? What? He's so cute! 
look, look at him. He's a little cute. Oh. Hey, there's a picture here. Yeah, he's not looking good, boy. Wait. This is the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted criminal affairs after I had rearranged everything. Linus picture and send it into the court record. Crime scene photo from taken two years ago. Okay. Gasp! Mr. Wright! That piece cut out from his vest could be that... Could that be... Yeah, he already he already did it. Oh my goodness. The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. What's this? This is a handprint, isn't it? That's cl that cloth. It had fingerprints on it. Who whoever fingerprints those must be the real murderer. What? But those fingerprints are yours, babe. They're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. So as long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled. Come now, Edgy. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gant, what now you want me to make out as the bad guy too? What? Now you want me to... Uh, hold on. Just stay there, cat. Okay. Now you want to make me out as the bad guy, too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you're forfeited from your right to make statements for any sort. Eh. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own neck. Uh-oh, pooping again. Grrr. Ah, so what? You think I'm worried? Sure. Sorry to disappoint you. But I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Uh, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't, but someone does. Someone. So what's your excuse, Rido? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Uh-huh. Um... Something that proves who knocked over Neil Marshall? Um... Neil Marshall causing his death. Hold on. I want to save this. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. I mean, except that it was, like, obviously planted there. Is this true, Mr. Wright? If I show that piece of evidence now, I'm sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. And if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before 
the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Um. Okay. So, is there actually a difference? Does anyone know? Does anyone know? Because I don't. I really don't. Um... Okay. The one that shows who really killed the prose killed prosecutor Marshall. Um I cannot show the evidence. What happens if I do that? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie. Chief Gant? You, you opened my safe. I know what you took was inside. The conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you don't, you, it's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you don't, won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice something odd about the chest area? It looks like the part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean you had this in your safe? What? What means? That means you, the chief of police, have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of police department. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, righto. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean you admit to it? <laughs> oh my god. I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. Wow, that is that is a sociopathically fast turnaround. So you really were manipulating her. I knew Lana. If it made it look like the blame lay with her sister, that when she saw the scene, she would ask me for aid. To assisted Ms. Skye. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence? You mean those items in your safe. But why? For insurance. Of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that a girl committed. Oh, why? Because she's a girl? <laughs> you mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. <laughs> See this jar fragment? Emma! I had most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? Ho 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 ho! Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean, that piece of cloth. Come on, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it, then, Chief Gant, that you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, uh, being Chief and all. 
But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Is it? Is it really? Because I'm pretty sure you got a lot of people murdered along the way, but hey. Uh, well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Rido. You should have shown it then before it was too late. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Alright, fine. Show the evidence. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. All right, then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Pro Prosecutor Marshall. There you go. Take it! Take it now! Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes. At last, you finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather, there must have been strong impact for it to be left so clearly. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. That You mean it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Really? Ho, ho, ho! You're as slow on the uptake as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Rido had all this time to present this evidence, yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know. You know whose fingerprints are on that. Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whatever the fingerprints belong to, whoever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. <laughs> the person who these fingerprints belong to are... What? He's now, like, prescient or something? What's going on? Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine. I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Eh, because I don't want to freak you out. Oh ho ho! You're really something, Rido. You knew this girl did it all along, and you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove the prosecutor marshal into his death. Hold it! How could you? You, you monster! Miss Sky, you knew these... Those fingerprints were... You knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you... You acted like she really didn't. Miss Guy, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ha! But I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. You purposely concealed conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I have a, I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? <sighs> Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you're absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves the real murderer, who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. Wait, it does? What, a contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction, one that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what could it possibly contradict? 
to get your tyrannical, your tyrannical errand running here to your Behold, a piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Um. Honestly, it looks like a different shape, to be honest with you. Um. Also, it, it was like someone had to have picked him up and jammed him on there. You know what I'm saying? Wait, hold on. Let me look at this one. Nope, his little shirts, his little vesty vest with a fringe is uh, intact there. So. This handprint, right? Yeah, someone left behind an oil stain uh, oil stain on the fabric. Whoever it was, they must have had really oily hands. I didn't ever look at this. I should have looked at this. Mr. Wright, think about it scientifically. Huh. A more likely explanation is the person slipped and fell on a freshly waxed floor. Getting wax all over their hand. Well, that would count for this amount of oil, I guess. Wax? Oil? Make it... I don't see what's so scientific about that, though. It has It happens, you know. All... I always slip on the floor at school after they've waxed. Oh. I still think... I still think... Okay, here we go. Um... I think it's that. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a look, good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes. His shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly. My point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Both blood poured out of his mouth. Gross. Oh, but that piece of cloth is clean. <gasps> it's clean. Wait. There's no blood on it. Ah! Since Emma Sky's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No! This is nonsense! Now then, Chief Gant, tell me, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could, have, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky picked up the unconscious prosecutor? And impaled him on the armor sword. You know what? You made the comment earlier about how fit he is for a 65 year old. That is fit. That is very fit. Um, and impaled him on the armor sword. No! Then to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death. Said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. The jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue and make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's vest? Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of creating insurance, you prove that you were the actual murderer. No! That's some exploding. It's finally over. That's all of his ego just being exploded out of his body. Objection. Heh. <laughs> oh ho 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 ho! That was close, Rhino. You almost had me. Uh, sorry. But I have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you, what do you mean, refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. 
Order, order. What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used and convict a suspect. Remember, Udgy. Earlier, old Rido over here concealed that piece of cloth. Ah, dang it. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Ah, dang it. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. Ho 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 Do you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, true. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Eh? Well, Mr. Wright? Um. It seems at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Oh my goodness, he's been playing 3D chess this whole time, folks. Mr. Wright, do you admit it? That you purposely and illegally concealed this piece of cloth? I... no. I did not. I admit I refused to present it on one point, at one point. <laughs> so the evidence is illegal. No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean, you couldn't? There are certain procedures involving involved when presenting evidence. No, Archie. Don't listen to this lies! He's nothing but a coward! You can't really believe! There's only one issue left. To be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let's settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present the evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, please do so now. Well, we do have a book on the law. So I'm just going to go with that. I'm just going to present that. Oh, yeah. I should probably have read this. No evidence shall be shown without the approval. Oh! Oh! Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Oh. Oh. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. Watch this. I've done my homework, too, Chief. <laughs> Indeed, Emma Skye's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However... At the point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. <gasps> rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. And I found this piece of evidence myself, inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. Rule 2. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And there, here's the crux of the matter. You see, the time it was, at the time it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... Sorry, but can't you recall... When this picture was presented, that was shown only a few moments ago. No, he's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. <laughs> you yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out his, this piece of the victim's chest. Chest. Vest, excuse me. Oh, yes. <sighs> no. It was then that you approved this cloth. As conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. 
The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before the prosecutor marshal in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer, and there's only one person who that could have been, is Damon Gant. The killer was you. Is it gonna poof? Is it gonna fall over dead? What's gonna happen? Not that. What the hell happened? I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. <laughs> he wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Starr and then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. The evidence is transferable. I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden, he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many uh, questions left unanswered. Hey, he opened his evidence locker and he was taking the evidence out. He said, it's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's when I saw it. Dad, a cursed knife. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in. So I hurried to wipe it up. I was worrying so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint. The blood handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer. Everyone had to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car? I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Grr. <laughs> Leaving the prosecution's car aside. <laughs> How could you get Miss, Miss Skies involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did, if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I felt so bad for having to do that. I just, I also didn't have time to pick and choose what to take. So, you left the jar fragments and the glove. Yeah. It looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They gotta, they do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You desperate, you despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring him down once you try to go it alone.
Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Uji. Oh, what? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. <laughs> Sorry, old friend. Uh, yeah, dude. Dude, seriously. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator, an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you're no longer that person. Ouch. Those days are gone now, Uji. Thank you and all the memories, though. <laughs> Don't you worry, I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Now you have Rhino here. And worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes. First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky. You no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help me oh from the time I had Gant help me forge evidence up till today. So it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Sky. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My, my, what high standards you have for a rookie. Dude. I can see why M Mia thought you so highly of you. Who knows? A few years from now, you will just might make it to the top. What? I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Guy? And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. Eh? You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it, it has been for you. Ha! It, it was nothing. A liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. Stop it. I only did my job. You can't handle praise. Come on. In the light of this case, it seems good. Self-examining is in order for us all. Miss Guy? Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent of murder. However, although the chief blackmailed you, the fact you are still acted as his accomplice, a trial will be scheduled for those crimes in a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Agreed. Everyone in this entire place agrees. Regarding the charges of murder, this court finds the defendant, Ms. Lana Sky, not guilty. Congratulations. You win! That is all. The court is adjourned. Adjourno! Let's go! February 25th, 5.03 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. At long last, it's finally over! Uh, Emma? Uh, <gasps> why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook. But at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended. I can see why Mia Fey thought so highly of you. I owe you many thanks, Mr. Wright. And you too, Mr. Edgeworth. She didn't thank her sister. You have suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. You've done well. Oh my god. You know, I did my best, too. But Lana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, jeez. <sighs> oh, guess I am. I've come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? 
You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run all around the wall on duty. On top of it, you call me here. I'm even happier people at funerals. Again, with its... Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh. Uh, you're here because of my sister again? Nope. Not this time. I came today because of, uh, you, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see some... Someone. I'd like to see some some membership. Lana! Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Oh, well, I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day two years ago was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could do to think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis! I asked Gant to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now, I realize I was wrong. <gasps> I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself, but I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I... I was so scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. <laughs> I was scared you'd react if you do. <gasps> but sis, you're only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis... I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have. Oh, Emma. Emma. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in doing, we can find the way back to our rightful path. That's oh, beautiful. It's really beautiful. And it is from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. <gasps> Sunshine and puppy dogs, rainbows and butterflies. Uh, last... At least, that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Mr. Wright? Mr. Gumshoe? Me? Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. Where was he hiding? I just came to say... Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right. Uh, well, um, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. What? No matter what anyone... One may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals. You, I can feel it. You and me. We're the same. Come to the dark side. We have cookies. One day, you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. See, why? Why are we? Why? It's the end of the case, and we still have flashbacks, dude. We just went through this. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. It's scary. But I've known that to be true for quite some time now. 
but Edgeworth. Who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Edgeworth! Don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said, in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. <gasps> oh, that's beautiful! You were working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that, partnership. I told you. Yeah. You were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. That's right. Mr. Wright? Huh. Who oh, what? Uh, oh, yeah. Um... What is this, pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright. Show him that Lana's talking about. <sighs> Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I have been able to find on our own. Um. I have no idea. Fr friendship? Do we have? Do we have a picture of friendship? I don't know. A picture of friendship. Um. What did they find together? Well, they found the evidence list together. I mean, sorta, they put it together, together. <laughs> um, that? That's the picture I drew. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list and I had the other. Apart, we could have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth, if you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends we need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Take care. Edgeworth, where will you, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember. You can you can let what happened kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe many thanks to you, right? What I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I better be going too. Okay. <laughs> I better be going to prison. No problem. But I'll be by to visit you soon. Seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. Oh, it's a little birdie doing scientific investigation. Scientific investigation? It's the first book I will ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. And so, another case came to close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun! <laughs> it is beautiful! And as for me, I think it's time to s I started on a new journey of my own. Journey to rediscover myself as a woman. No, wait. Well... Uh, don't go trekking off just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the uh, chief prosecutor. 
You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, maybe okay with me, but the folks at the prison have a d uh, are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. What? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had it a wild side. Yeah, well, haha, <laughs> see you. Uh, Mr. Wright here is the one who's been footing the bill. Huh? What? What you think I could afford <laughs> with my salary? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, pal. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. It's because he told him he works for him now, dummy. He's obviously not a cop. <laughs> like, how else is he gonna do it? Jesus. Oh my god. Uh, why is it I suddenly feel like I want to scream? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go <laughs> pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, that was very silly. <laughs> oh, thank God. Like, I don't think I could watch it. I don't think I could go to the next one if it was if it was longer than this or as long. Like, it really had me going. Oh, I still managed to find my way back that I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. Ah, okay, I understand. Oh, and then they're giving you, like, what happened to them after? Yikes, I thought I was a goner for a moment there. In the end, though, they overlooked my unauthorized investigation of the chief's office. If we penalized you anymore, you'd be worse than firing you. <laughs> yep, that's what they said. It just goes to show, you can't shake me off that easily. <laughs> oh, this dude. My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can't you be can you believe it? I've been demoted. To <laughs> My partner is keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them though. Someday I'm going to make detective. Yes, sir. Then I can just be like that dick gumshoe. <laughs> no, I don't ever want to see him again. His partner is, um, that, that, yeah, that's his partner. Oh my goodness. All right, how do I fix that thing? Ah, <sighs> hotkeys, advanced, notifications, appearance. Ms. Star managed to sneak this into me. She's seeing one of the guards that <laughs> brought it to me. Well, cowboy, it looks like you did. You ain't gave Bambina back her life. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? Oh, yeah, everyone's in jail now. Like, I forgot about that. Okay, um. Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while really why not as far a farewell gift i put a new meal in the menu top layer tastes bitter as defeat but the bottom layer is sweet as victory <laughs> kids seem to dig the turnabout theme it's a hot seller <laughs> just make sure not to eat it backwards oh my goodness it's silly okay um Let's 
see, what was his name again? Anyway, he said he'd been doing or something or other for uh, how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another child to get to, so I better be, uh... Huh? Oh no, I forgot my gavel. Oh my goodness. Word protection. Restrict words from appearing paragraph. Oh, here we go. Turn that off. Right there. Okay, that should not happen again. Oh, look, it's our friend. I still I can't go back until full-fledged spirit. Oh, sure, Mystic Maya. Afternoon, Maya turning. Coming. I'll see you around, Nick. Sure, why not? Okay. How is that overly long? It's like two sentences. Three sentences. <laughs> like, it doesn't seem like it's overly long. Can you try posting something else just to make sure that it, like, is off? Or someone posts, like, three tenth sentences? Or blah! Mr. Edgeworth? I brought your tea! What's going on? Uh, why the bellboy? Why did you bring the bellboy back? Like, is he really that important? I don't know. I don't know. I guess he did appear in a couple of the episodes, so... Maybe? I do love the soft jazz that's going. This is great. This is very relaxing. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wright. Uh, thank you so much for everything. Aha! Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> They do have uh, low standards for length. Wait. <gasps> oh my goodness, there's a letter. Aw, look how cute. That's adorable. Rise from the ashes. Achievement unlocked. Well, thank you so much for joining me <laughs> on this never-ending journey through a Phoenix Wright's story. Um, I will be back next weekend with with probably some more Ace and Attorney as we go. And um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I um, and I present I do lots of other games mostly indie puzzle games indie weird um, odd games I like, you know those things also guild wars 2 all the time random throughout the week so please join anytime you see that i'm um yeah i'm just rambling now just ignore me like bleh. anyway i hope to see you guys again i really appreciate it thank you so much <laughs>